You are about to hear a story based on actual events to protect the innocent. Names and places have been changed. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers bring you Mr. William Holden in a story taken from life. Tonight's presentation of... Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents Report on the Jolly Death Riders, a story about the tragic misuse of hot rod automobiles, starring Mr. William Holden. Well, hiya, Hap. Hi, Harlow. How was the vacation? Oh, uh, Autolite, I guess. Autolite? Sure, perfect. Just like the Autolite electrical system in your Autolite-equipped car. Why bring that up? Well, why not? Your Autolite electrical system is the willing and wondrous working whiz that produces and stores electricity right under the hood of your car to enable you to start your engine, use your lights, horn, radio, heater. Yes, sure, Harlow, but the vacation... Oh, there's never a vacation hap for the thousands of component parts that go to make up the complete Autolite electrical system. So that's why my Autolite-equipped car is ready to go every time I turn the switch. Right you are, Hap, and that's why Autolite electrical systems are used as original factory equipment on many leading makes of our finest cars, trucks, and tractors. You've sold me, Harlow. So, friends, take a tip from me and specify Autolite original factory parts when replacements are needed. You'll find it pays because you're always right... With Autolite. And now, with Report on the Jolly Death Riders and the performance of Mr. William Holden, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense. Hi, Herb. Oh, oh, hi, Cap. Hey, you look tired. I look tired and I got a right to look tired. Wrap it up. Ask me sometime when I'm not so beat. I hate them like this. We all do. Just kids, Cap. Just a bunch of punk kids that should have had more sense. They need a good lesson. Well, they've had a good one. Look, I'll, I'll be in the other office making out my report in case anybody wants me. I'll relay the information. Thanks. now. Accident report. Huh. Murder. Yeah, that'd be a better word for it. From Lieutenant Harbor, San Francisco Police Department to Traffic Division, August 27th, 1951. Report on the Jolly High Riders. Jolly Death Riders might be more appropriate. At approximately 8.35 p.m. August 22nd, Mr. and Mrs. Warren Milford of 3589 Glendon Drive, Berkeley, California, were driving in their 1949 sedan along the Bay Flats, approaching the ramp into the Oakland Bay Bridge. Brackets. Special note. August 22nd was the 10th anniversary of the Milfords. Warren Milford had arranged for a surprise party at his sister-in-law's home in the Marina District. End Brackets. As the Milfords passed through the tunnel on the Yerba Buena Island and approached the bay half of the bridge, the traffic at that time of evening was extremely light. I think we should have telephoned the Warrens. Huh? Why? They might not be home. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying the ride anyway. Nice night? Yes, it is. No fog. Clear as a bell. Listen, Warren, I don't want you and that brother of yours to get started on that baseball. That's all the two of you ever talk about. Uh-huh. Gladys, what are you talking well, about? Well, from the minute we get together, it's baseball. Seals here, seals there. You think that that's all there hey, was in the... Hey, hey, look at those two cars coming this way. Sure going awfully fast. But well, they must be crazy. They're racing. Warren, they're right in the middle of the bridge. Uh-huh. Oh, it's a couple of those hot rods piled up with a bunch of youngsters. Warren, they're not moving over. Hey, you darn fools, get over! Warren, In order to avoid a head-on collision with one of the hot rods, Warren Milford swerved his car to the right, but he lost control and crashed into one of the steel beam supports of the bridge. 
Neither one of the rot hard cars involved stopped. And not one of the other passing motorists who stopped to render assistance was able to give any specific information to the officers at the scene of the accident. In view of that fact, no general alarm was spread. Results of the accident. Warren Milford was thrown clear of the crash. He miraculously only suffered cuts and bruises. His wife, Gladys, died of internal injuries in the ambulance. Warren Milford was informed of his wife's death at the receiving hospital. Our 10th wedding anniversary. She didn't know a thing. I'm so sorry. Mr. Milford, uh, I'd like you to try to answer just a few questions no for me. Thing she probably thought I hadn't remembered, but I, I did. I know it's hard for you, Mr. Milford. I, I know it's awfully hard, but do you think you'd be able to identify either one of the cars? The cars? Oh, kids. They, they were just kids. Kids? Yeah. The opera joyride. Could you identify any one of them if you saw them again? No. No, I didn't see any faces. They weren't all boys, though. Some girls, I think. Just a bunch of jolly high riders. And what about the cars, Mr. Milford? Uh, what kind were they? Well, you've seen them. All over town, all the young high school kids have them. The hot rods. Hot rods? Yeah. Could you identify just one of them? Jolly high riders took her. What was that? It was in white letters on, on, on a gold background. Uh, just for a second, I saw it. What did you see? The jolly high riders painted on the side of one of the cars. They took her. The jolly high riders? Yes, it was white letters on a gold background. All right, Mr. Milford, you can rest now. Sergeant? Oh, kids, just young kids. They're out for a joyride. <laughs> The following morning, I assigned Detective Sergeant Boyle to locate the whereabouts of the hot rod club known as the Jolly High Riders. It was a simple matter. They were listed in one of the national hot rod magazines. The address turned out to be a cheap gymnasium located up on West Stockton. The gym was up one flight of stairs. You look inquisitive. You want something? Yeah, the uh, Jolly High Riders. I understand they meet here. Maybe they do. Who's in charge? You want a lot of information for that? Uh-oh. Gendarme, huh? I should have smelled you. Where's the club meet, mister? I manage the gym, gendarme. I'm the head boy. The Jolly High Riders use the back room. Over there. You see the sign? The Jolly High Riders. The club meeting room. No harm, is it? No harm. They got five <laughs> charter members. Five in the whole club. Just five? Yeah. Just five, gendarme. That's a big word with you. Real big. I learned it young. I bet you did. Who are the charter members, head boy? What's this all about? It's a legitimate club. I want names. Me? Larch Brisson. That's a name for you. Who else besides you, Larch? Oh, there's Mickey. Mickey Holzer from a parking garage. His girlfriend, Julie. And Wanda Lake. A sweet girl. Sweet to me all the time. And Wally. Fat Bergman, we call him. Wally, the fat boy. He's over there. Hey, look at him, skip rope. <laughs> he wants to lose weight. What a laugh, a gendarme. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Don't die laughing. Come on. Hey, take it easy, you. Bergman? Yeah? Oh. A gendarme, oh. Wally. A great big gendarme. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's nice. I'm glad to know you, sir. Yes, sir. Wally, um... Do you any any of you boys own a hot rod? Hot rod? Yeah, it's somebody owns a hot rod, John Don. Who? The whole club owns a car. What do you think of that? Wally, uh, where were you last night about 8.30? Last night? Last night? Where was I last night? I, I got such a bad memory. You went to a meeting in that room, Wally. You went to a meeting at the club? Oh, yeah, that's right, sir. We had a meeting. We, uh... We discussed how come somebody stole our club car. What joker stole our car with the name on the side, the Jolly High Riders? And right before the big race on Saturday, how come? Large Brisson was a hard boy. He managed the cheap gymnasium and lived in one of its back rooms. Walter Bergman, just out of school, lived with his family. It was Bergman who later volunteered the address of Wanda Lake and of the garage where Mickey Holzer worked. The garage supervisor told me that Mickey was downstairs working in the mechanic's shop. 
He was working on the frame of a car. It's a familiar frame. Mickey? I spotted you, mister. What do you want? Lieutenant Harbor, San Francisco Police Department. Getting her ready for the race? Maybe, maybe not. What are those things you're working on? I'm putting on single-acting shocks. Against the law? No. This your car, Mickey? Part of it. When it's finished. Oh, that's right. You and your girlfriend, Julie, are charter members of the Jolly High Riders. So? Well, this must be the club car. The new one. Oh? What happened to the old one? Somebody stole it. Yesterday afternoon, somebody glommed it. Can you imagine? Why didn't you report the theft to the police? Well, because... Oh, you know, we thought maybe one of the other ride clubs had made a big joke on us. Right before the big race coming up Saturday. Last night, Mickey, your old hot rod car caused a big accident on the Oakland Bay Bridge. Oh, it's awful. It's terrible. The driver's in the hospital. I'm sorry. His wife's in the city morgue. <laughs> What's the matter, Mickey? Nothing. I just hate talk like that. I hate talk about killing is it wrong to hate talk like that? After having spoken with the three male members of the High Riders, I knew I had a tough one on my hands. All three boys were lying. It was obvious. Wanda Lake was home when I rang the doorbell of her apartment on Kearney. I took one look at her and understood why she was sweet. Police Lieutenant Harbor, Miss Lake. May I talk to you for a few minutes? Uh-huh. Don't mind my curlers, huh? I want some curl for tonight. I was just practicing to dance the gym. Come on in. Thank you. I'd offer you a drink, only I can't keep it in the house with Hazel around. Hazel? Yeah. She's my older sister. She takes care of me. Ever since my folks died. That's a laugh, huh? Taking care of me. How old are you, Wanda? Seventeen. Ripe old age? Yeah. What are we going to talk about, Lieutenant? Oh, about the Jolly High Riders? Hey, I'm a charter member. What do you know? <laughs> That's fine. I understand your club car was stolen yesterday afternoon. Yeah. Ain't it dreadful? Uh-huh. And it caused a big accident last night, Wanda. You mean our hot rod? That's right. Hey, how dreadful. Where were you last night? To a meeting of our club at the gym. We talked all about our dance tonight. Did you talk about anything else? Oh, he sure did. We talked all about our club car being stolen right before the big race. Somebody stole it right off the street. Wasn't that just dreadful, Lieutenant? Yeah, Wanda. Just dreadful. The High Riders had built a solid alibi. Whichever one of them had masterminded it had done it with careful planning. We had no lead on the other hot rod involved... So I had to follow through with what I had. I had one member yet to talk to. Mickey's girlfriend, Julie. I made plans to see her the next morning. But a break in the case came sooner than I expected. It was late that same night. I was in the office going over some reports when the call came in. <laughs> lieutenant Harbor speaking. This is Wally Bergman. The fat boy, Lieutenant. You know Wally? Yeah, Wally. Listen, I'm so mad... Everybody's gone. They're going to meet again in an hour for another race. Where, Wally? The bridge. I'll show them. Meet me at the traffic island, Mr. Harbor. I'll be there. I'm so mad. They think they're so smart. A straightaway onto the bridge was practically deserted when we got there. As we drew up to the curb of the traffic island, I saw that something was wrong. Lying doubled up on the grass was Wally Bergman. He had bruises and cuts all over his face and was bleeding at the mouth. And standing next to him, hands outstretched, was Mickey Holtz. Another meeting, Mickey? Huh? Yeah. Uh, look, uh, somebody called me. I came to meet somebody. Save it, Mickey, save it. Tell it to somebody who will believe you. All right, Cap, put the cuffs on him. Autolite is bringing you Mr. William Holden in Report on the Jolly Death Riders. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense.
Friends, the big Labor Day weekend is coming up. If you're going to drive, make certain that your car is in good condition. If it's slow and sluggish, treat your car to a checkup at your nearest authorized Autolite service station, where you will find specialists trained under Autolite supervision. Just look in the classified section of your telephone directory under the heading Automobile Electrical Service, or pay a visit to the dealer who sells your make of car. In either case, you can be sure of getting Autolite original factory parts. Remember, only Autolite original factory parts can assure you the balance, teamwork, and perfect timing built into your car's Autolite electrical system right on the assembly line. Because from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. William Holden in Elliot Lewis's production of The Jolly Death Riders, a dramatic report well calculated to keep you in suspense. Mickey Holzer was held for assault and battery. After Bergman had been treated at the clinic, I questioned him. I got no quarters. And I knew that I'd get none from Mickey either. But nevertheless, I had him brought into my office. Mickey, you're in a bad way. It looks like it, doesn't it? A charge of assault and battery can be a bad thing. You gotta prove it. Mickey, tell me who was driving the car. You're so smart, figure it out for yourself. Oh, no, I'm not so smart. Just trying to see that things are done right. That's the job of any police officer. I uh, wonder if Julie will tell me, Mickey. Ask her. Go ahead, ask her. What about your mother? You try everything, don't you, copper? You're bitter, Mickey. All right, bitter. Is that against the law, too? I'm holding you for 48 hours, and I'm going to find that car. Go ahead. Be bitter for all 48 hours. It seems that every cop over a long period of time develops a sense of intuition. I was like any cop. And my intuition told me that Mixie Holster was not the real assaulter of Wally Bergman. The following morning, I had a visitor. She was a small, graying old woman. I told her the whole story. Not Mickey, Mr. Policeman. Oh, no, not him. He wouldn't even hurt the little thing. Uh, Tell me, uh, has Mickey ever gotten into any trouble before? Oh, no. His papa died when he was only nine years old. Mickey promised his papa he would never lie to me. Mrs. Holzer... All I want to know is the name of the person who was driving the car that Mickey was in. If I know that person, I'll know who beat up Wally Bergman. But Mickey refuses to tell me. Oh, maybe I will talk to Mickey. Maybe he won't lie to me. All right, we'll try it. Sergeant, bring in Mickey Holster. As soon as you bring him in, I'll leave you two alone. I have faith in my son. All the faith in the whole world. He promised his papa oh, he wouldn't go back on his word. Mickey is not that kind of a boy. I believe you, Mrs. Holtz. All right, inside, kid. Ma. Ma, what are you doing here? Oh, my son. Oh, my son. All right, I'll, I'll wait outside. What are you doing here? Why'd you come? I came because I have to help you, Mickey. Ma, go home. Go home. This is no place for you. Uh, Mama should be by her son when he's in trouble. Uh, who called you? Nobody called me. I came because I want to help you. Nobody can help me. Me alone. You got no business here. Well, I got a lot of business. Mickey, the the policeman told me you are in a lot of trouble. He he told me that if you would only tell him the name of the boy who was driving the car, he said if you told him that, Mickey, there would be no more trouble. There'd be lots of trouble. Mickey, Mickey, if you won't for your mama, maybe you will for Papa. Papa loved you, Mickey. Mark. Leave. Papa, for Papa, Mickey, for him. Mark, get out, get out. I'm sorry, Mrs. Holson. Not even for his Papa. I knew my break had to come from within the members of the guilty club. And Julie, Mickey's girlfriend, was my last chance for that break. 
She worked in a dime store on Mission Street. On her lunch hour, I asked her to walk over to the park with me. We sat down on one of the benches. I know that somebody in the club has told you not to talk, Julie. Who told you? Mickey? Please. All right, all right. Can you uh, tell me who started the High Riders, Julie? Well, surely you can tell me that. Mickey went to the gym to work out. He got to know the fellas. They all talked. The club got started that way. Uh -huh. Who bought the hot rod? They all pitched in. A few dollars from everybody. Where's the car, Julie? We all told you it was stolen. Yes, yes, I know you told me. But it's a lie. You're all lying for no good reason. It isn't so much what's been done, Julie. A, a terrible thing, yes, but we want to see that it doesn't happen again. Can you understand that? Was uh, Mickey driving, Julie? No, he... I, I mean, I, I... What do you mean, Julie? I told you what you wanted to know. Someday when you're older, Julie, you'll understand how important this is. I know you will. You're not a bad girl, but it's, it's up to me right now to make you understand. Young as you are. Please, I don't want to talk about it. It's because you're afraid. Please, Mr. Harper. Julie, someday you and Mickey will be man and wife. Marriage is the happiness of two people. A long time ago, this man, Warren Milford, and his wife were just like you and Mickey. Mr. Harper. They made the same plans. They thought the same thoughts. And in each other's arms, they felt the same feelings. And there was then no difference than, than there is now between you and Mickey. Mr. Harper, I... You've taken a silly pledge dictated by a person who in the cool of evening strikes down another person in death. And thinks nothing about it. Do you know what a person like this is called, Julie? Do you know? I'm afraid. A murderer, Julie. A murderer. And if you and I let them go, it can happen again. What they did was wrong, and we don't want it to happen again. <laughs> tell me, Julie. Tell me. Help, Mickey. It was Wanda. She was driving it. It was a race with the flying fleeters from Oakland. On the bridge, Wanda wanted to drive, and Lark said it was all right. And the hot rod, where is it? I don't know, I don't know. When we got back to the club, Lark said not to worry. He made up the story. He told us not to worry about the car. <laughs> all right, Julie. It's all right. <laughs> The case of the Jolly High Riders was broken. I needed one last item, the car in question. I poured over every last bit of testimony by the kids. And then it hit me. The big race on Saturday. It was a hunch and I played it. A local paper gave me the location of where the speed test trials were being held. A long, sandy stretch of beach on the west end there of the peninsula. The trials were already in progress when I got there. Two of them weren't hard to spot. They were racing in a low, cut-down blue car. The frame had looked familiar as it whizzed by me. I recognized the single shocks that Mickey had been working on. Hey, come to the races, huh, gendarme? Hi. Nice-looking rod, Larch. Hey, the latest. 46 block, member mountain for the master cylinder, floor ship transmission. Great for drag. And single-acting shocks. Right. Nice paint job. When are you going to put your club name on the side? Soon. Right now. Oh, sure you will. Right about here, Larch? Hey, don't scratch the paint job with that knife. Gold. Underneath the blue. And I bet if I scratch the rest of it Look, off... Look, you copper! Letters J, O... You got no right to touch... I played a hunch, Larch. Yeah, you're crazy! My hunch was that you boys couldn't resist this race. He's lousy, lousy when a guy can't live his own life. I'm arresting you for assault and battery, Larch. And, Wanda, you for manslaughter. Larch, we can't race. Yeah. That's right, Wanda, you can't race. And it may be a long time before you race again. I later found out Wally Bergman's reason for wanting to volunteer information. The boy had a crush on Wanda. She encouraged him and then laughed him off. Wanda Lake, not yet 18, will be turned over to juvenile authorities. Larch Brisson, just 21, and facing a charge of assault and battery, may have some time to think over his mistake. Actually, the only mistake he made was in trying to cover up the accident. Hot rods are not really bad things. They're not wrong. In fact, in some respects, they're healthy. For kids to take them apart and put them back together again, to see how fast they can make them run, 
It gives them a direction in which to toss a lot of extra energy. But there's that one important thing. Hot rods should be driven in places like that stretch of beach on the peninsula. Places set aside for them, like Muroc and the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Not on the highways. End of report. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. William Holden. Autolite has again started its new suspense season with a story which demonstrates the tragic results of careless driving. And now here is a man who, as president of the National Safety Council, is vitally concerned with highway safety, Mr. Ned Dearborn. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. It is especially significant that Autolite chose to present report on the Jolly Death Riders this evening, because in a few days the Labor Day weekend will start with its tragic toll of needless highway accidents. Through stories like this, along with continued efforts of outstanding companies like the Electric Autolite Company, we are making some headway in the fight against thoughtless driving. In recognition of vigorous and continued efforts of Autolite in helping to improve highway safety, it is my great pleasure as president of the National Safety Council to present for the third consecutive year the Council's Public Interest Award for Exceptional Service to Safety to Mr. Royce G. Martin, Chairman of the Board and President of the Electric Autolite Company. Thank you, Mr. Dearborn. Safety is as much our business as making automotive, aviation, and marine products in our 28 plans from coast to coast. We will always cooperate with the rest of the great automotive industry to help make America a safe driving nation. So this Labor Day, and every day, don't take chances. Make sure that your car is in proper operating condition. And then drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. Next week on Suspense, our star will be Mr. Jeff Chandler in another story based on actual events and concerning one of the most fantastic prison breaks ever engineered. A dramatic report we call The Steel River Prison Break. In weeks to come, we shall present Miss Agnes Moorhead, Mr. Charles Lawton, and the popular young favorite, Mr. Tony Curtis, all on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Marwick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Report on the Jolly Death Riders was written for Suspense by Richard George Petticini. Featured in tonight's cast were Jack Crucian, Sam Edwards, Kathy Lewis, Edith Ungold, Barbara Eiler, Joseph Kearns, and Eddie Firestone. Portions of this program were transcribed. William Holden will soon be seen in Paramount Pictures' Submarine Command, starring William Holden and William Bendix. And remember, next week on Suspense, Mr. Jeff Chandler, in another story based on actual events, a dramatic report we call The Steel River Prison Break. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers wish you all a happy, safe Labor Day weekend. Good driving, good night, and remember... You're always right with Autolite. This is the CBS Radio Network.